What's up, everybody? Joe Bernstein here. My first time back going live um, since before Christmas. So probably uh, Christmas Eve or the 23rd was the last time I was live. So it's been over two weeks. I missed you. Glad to be back. So I want to talk a little about acorn theory. And as you all know, I've been really leaning in this distinction of being a consumer or a creator. And I've found that for me to live a great life, to enjoy my life, to have powerful experiences and beautiful relationships, to spend time how I want, I have to embody the mindset of a creator rather than a consumer. And a big part of creator mindset is learning to take everything that looks like a challenge or an obstacle and consider it a teacher or a coach or a challenger rather than a problem or a setback or a failure. And one thing that helps me align with this and something I teach my clients, and sometimes when I teach this in an early session, it blows their mind, but it's acorn theory. So James Hillman was a student of Carl Jung, and he actually saw things a little different. He saw things a bit differently than, say, Freud, for example, who believed that all of our conditioning and all of the way that we've been treated by our foundational relationships, that completely creates who we are. Hillman said, yeah, there's certainly those factors. There's certainly nurture. But he actually felt like there was something deeper, that there was nature, that each human being was born with their soul's code or their soul print already on them, that their fullest potential, their ability to be their best selves, their calling in life was already something that they came born with. And that essentially it's all the challenges and obstacles and traumas and setbacks in life that help that to grow, that help that to flourish. So acorn theory is like this. Every human being is very much like an acorn. Now, if you think about an acorn, where does it come from? It comes from an oak tree. Now, when I was down in New Orleans in City Park uh, over the holiday on New Year's Eve, I got to see a 1,200-year-old oak tree, and it's magnificent, and it's beautiful, and it spans hundreds of feet in every direction. And in fact, it creates so much, so much oxygen for humans, ecosystems for all kinds of insects, and squirrels, and birds, and different animals, and shade, and potentially, if they ever get cut down, lumber. An oak tree is this powerful symbol of life because it creates life, and it is life. Now, oak trees have within it a blueprint for millions upon millions upon millions of acorns. Acorns are a seed of an oak tree. Now, here's what happens with acorns, though. Acorns fall to the ground, and a lot of them are going to get eaten. They'll become squirrel food. Some of them might just blow away and eventually break down and deteriorate and become and compost and become part of the soil and the fertilizer. But some of them get blown by the wind and buried by the, the rain and they get into the muck and the mire or maybe they're buried by some sort of rodent to be saved for later. And essentially, it's only the ones that get buried. It's only the ones that get fertilized, only the ones that become wet and soggy and moist and lost, if you will, that ever germinate to potentially become an oak tree. So many of us are walking through life thinking that things that get in our way, things that challenge us, setbacks, challenges, traumas, failures, obstacles, that they are the problems that make life hard. And in fact, those are the actual challenges. Those are the opportunities that make life meaningful, that make life worth living, that help us become the person that we want to be. So me, for example, I know that if I had not grown up overweight or obese, depending on how you want to call it, if I had not grown up having disconnection from my body, if I had not grown up feeling a little bit ashamed of my body, if I had not grown up with these challenges, I would have never learned to become truly healthy in a sustainable way that makes me feel alive in all kinds of ways, sensually, physically, intellectually. I've learned to manage my mental health and my anxiety and my challenges with my own emotional set. Uh, you know, kind of um, baseline because I decided that it was time to lose weight. If I had never had all the weight, I would have never figured these things out. I've learned to prioritize my love and relationship life. I've learned how to date with integrity and with passion and with curiosity. I've learned how to build skill sets for, for romance, for 
connection, for communication. I've learned to understand what relationships mean. I've learned to understand sexuality on a deeper level because I struggled a lot growing up, didn't date much, and then got into a very toxic marriage and that fell apart. Because of these setbacks and these challenges and these failures, I've learned to cultivate a great life for myself now. And the list goes on. If I hadn't been a poor student and basically flunked out of college, I wouldn't have gotten the job that I got with Bose, the job that I love for 14 years, a job that taught me so many skills, which then I now leverage in this moment to create a business that gives me freedom and aliveness and excitement and has me feel on mission and purpose. So the bottom line is I want you to adopt acorn theory, your power, your potential, your brilliance, your creativity, your compassion, your health, your love life, everything that you want to be the most conscious, the amazing, beautiful version of yourself, the most dope and gorgeous version of yourself, as some would say, who I know here in social justice movements, it's already inside of you. Do you allow the fertilizer, the challenges of life to fuel and feed your growth? Or do you do allow it to just get you down and hold you back? Now, I know that the transition from allowing it to fuel your growth is not an easy one. It's not one I would expect. It's not one that most of our culture is teaching us. They're certainly not teaching us in school or church. They're certainly not teaching us on our sports teams growing up. TV's not teaching it to us. It's just not happening out there. But that change in the way you see your life, it's possible. So that's the choice. When you have a challenge, even just for one day at a time, can you look at it as fuel that's going to feed your growth and you becoming the best version of you? I hope you can. If this message is valuable, drop a comment below or share it. Talk to you soon. Peace.